All right, so welcome back to my friend's garage. Today I am going to be measuring in inside the back of here and underneath to see which electric drive unit I think will fit. I'm either gonna use the Model 3 rear drive unit or the, I'm thinking the Model S and Model X small drive unit, uh, the rear drive unit. Both of these motors have peak power output of 220 kilowatts or just less than 300 horsepower. The only difference is the Model 3 rear drive unit sits in front of the rear axle line. You know, the alternative would be to use the Model S and Model X rear drive unit that sits behind the rear axle line. You can see there's a ton of room um, behind the rear axles. You can see them there. Before we get any further into the video, I want to remind folks to please subscribe if you want to follow this build. I'm guessing it'll be quite entertaining since I've never done an EV swap before, and I'm really learning as I go. I'm relying on resources like YouTube and car forums and really people I've met who've done a similar thing. All right, now let's get back to the video. If I could fit the motor like way up there, especially if I get it out of here, then I could use this whole this whole space here for batteries, which would be amazing. So yeah, if the Model 3 motor would fit, it would go in front of the rear axles there, which it might fit, that's where the transmission was. If not, it would have to sit behind and that would leave less room for the battery pack, which is gonna be big, you know, especially if I'm doing 30 kilowatt hours, that's a pretty big pack. That's a, a whole Nissan Leaf pack. Um, so it's, I'm going to need the space, so it would be ideal. Um, so we're going to start measuring 20 inches. I guess it can be something like that. That's like eight inches to the top there. It's about 24 inches. Motor would have to fit really like in here. And I don't think with this here, it's going to fit 23 inches. Eight inches, 17 inches, that looks like 11 inches. All right, so now that I had some measurements from the car, it was time to look at some CAD drawings of the two different Tesla drive units. All right, we're gonna begin with the Model 3 rear drive unit, and both of the files we're gonna be looking at come from GrabCAD, which is a really cool website where people submit their drawings. One really nice feature of GrabCAD is that you can measure the distance between points on these CAD drawings. This first measurement comes in at just under 520 millimeters. That's the width of the motor, not including the motor mounts. I'm assuming I can remove those if I needed to. The front to back measurement is 486 millimeters or about 19, just over 19 inches. All right, now we're taking a look at how tall it is from the about where the axles come in to the top and also from the middle of the electric motor case to the top. All right, so now we're switching over to the Model S or Model X small rear drive unit. Again, same power as the Model 3 rear drive unit. James did mention that the units are a little funky on this one. Instead of 0.45 millimeters, it should be 0.45 meters. So we'll uh, convert those all over as needed. All right, so now looking to the dimensions, we see that this has a length of 0.45 meters, has a width of 0.54 meters, and a height of 0.12 meters. I recognize that these measurements are pretty rough coming from these drawings, but we'll use them as a rough guide to compare the two motors. All right, so now that we have measured in the car and we've also looked at these CAD files and have a rough idea of the size of these um, drive units, it looks like the that, you know, there's going to be some cutting involved either way. So if we were to go with the Model 3 rear drive unit, which sits in front of the rear axle line, we'd have to basically remove the rear seats. So no more back seats. That's okay. Who sits in the back of a 911 anyways? The, op the other option, the Model S or Model X rear drive unit, the small one, uh, we would have to, if we were to put that one in, we'd have to cut away some of the rear subframe. So there's cutting involved no matter which direction or which option we go with. All right, so this is from Leon Chai's YouTube channel. Um, this is another 996 that's getting a Tesla swap. 
And actually, this one is taking the large drive unit, which also sits behind the rear axle. But you can see here they had to modify the rear suspension and rear subframe a bit to get this thing to fit. We wanted to make sure that the Tesla was sitting straight too. You can't have it too clocked. You know, because it's cooler and there's oil in it, right? Yeah. There's oil to cool the differential. So it has to be at a certain level. So we actually cut this and then we had to frame all the stuff up from back here. This is all custom. Crazy. Tie rods and stuff. If I had to pick between cutting the rear seats out and the rear subframe, for me it is get rid of the rear seats. And so this is kind of the direction I'm thinking we will go. Another big reason I want to put the motor in front of the rear axle line is with the weight of batteries that will be going in and the um, rear drive unit, if I can get everything more forward, it will match more closely the original weight uh, balance of the car front to rear. You'd think, okay, Model 3 rear drive unit is the choice. Well, not so fast because you can get small drive units for about 1500 bucks, whereas the Model 3 rear drive unit is like four to $5,000. So almost three times as much. This is having me think a little outside the box because I want to use the small drive unit in front of the rear axle line. So how is this possible? All right, so if we start having a look at the motor here, this would be the back, this would be the front. There's a couple ways we could get the motor part here in front of the axle line. And the easiest way to do that is to just spin it like this. And that way, oil feeds everything that was on the bottom stays on the bottom. The only thing that would change in this configuration is we would have to run the electric motor in reverse, in the reverse, re uh, reverse direction in order to go forward. Um, but looking around the forms, it looks like this is possible. Um, if you modify the oil pump inside the drive unit. Um, another thing that people were concerned with was if you were running the motor in reverse direction that some of the bearings inside the drive unit and like the reduction gear set may experience different loading. Um, but it seems, you know, I guess that's something I'm willing to try because I can't find a good answer. It seems like I think there's one person who converted an E30, and it seems like he has experience running these in reverse and not having any issues. So after one final check on the dimensions, I did find a really nice CAD drawing um, that Stealth EV has provided for both the front and the rear small drive units. So check that out. So after measuring, making some final measurements, it seems like this motor will roughly fit. And so at this point, I'm just gonna buy it and get it here and, and so we can get hands on it and start to see what the rough fit will be. I'm hoping by the next video that the drive unit will be here and I'll have, you know, we can look through it and just see it. I'm ex really excited to just get one here and start looking at it and seeing how it works and maybe even taking it apart and looking at the oil supply system and all of that stuff. So I'm excited to have finally made a decision. This was really tough, but I think, you know, it's, it's worth taking the time to make sure that you make these decisions considering all the factors. And in the end, you know, price is always a big factor and was the reason, really the reason that we went with the small drive unit. Um, instead of the Model 3. So looking forward to getting it here and thanks again for watching and, uh, and, and being on this journey with me. So pumped right now. So freaking pumped. <laughs>